Hi, uh, my name is Mike Minter. I'm with a Stupid Fun Club, and I'm also with Crazy Research, which <laughs> this is an example of this, of some crazy research that I did. Uh, squirt gun that you can drive around with your Android phone. But um, I'm here on kind of on like a more serious uh, crazy research project is that um, about a year ago my uh, daughter was riding her bicycle and a car took a turn in front of her and uh, she hit the car and bounced off it and landed on the sidewalk and even though she was wearing a helmet she got a concussion. And so um, it really started me to thinking about like you know, this was a very typical bike accident, and one where you can get hurt really bad, and thousands of uh, bicyclists get, uh, get hurt that way, and it's very preventable. Um, a little bit about my background, I worked on the uh, uh, world's first and only autonomous motorcycle <laughs> for a DARPA competition, so um, I know a little bit, and, uh, and that eventually, uh, the people from that, uh, at least one of them went on to work on the autonomous car uh, project at uh, Google that's getting a lot of press lately. And so, so that kind of gave me a background to think of like, well, my daughter had her smartphone, and in the future, most likely all cars will have a Google Maps system of Google has its way. And so both entities know where they're at, and they both are talking with the cloud, and uh, so the car and the bicycle know about each other, and the cars have you know, very sophisticated things. The computers for years now that they know when a door's open or the turn signal's on or whatever. So I thought, well, why don't we make that device so that the car and the bicycle can communicate with each other so when, the, when Google enables all the cars that this can happen. So, uh, so I went and uh, made the first prototype. Uh, Lauren, can you bring up the bicycle? Um, also, uh, could you flip over to the, the bicycle page, please, from the website? Okay, okay so the, the concept is here is that there is a, uh, a phone on your, on your handlebars, and it's, this is a display of the phone. And the uh, phone is measuring close calls, bumps, and then it's doing uh, snapshots, of very snapshots that I asked it to do in case something happens, then time lapse. And so the close calls, uh, this is a close call right here. There's a, a sensor, a regular old sonar sensor here, 25 bucks, and it detects when things are happening, registers on the phone, and that gets uh, sent up to the, to the cloud. Bounce are just your accelerometer, uh, snapshots, or I just press a button, and the time lapse. And so, um, so I, I did this, and I, I drove around, and I have a a phone here, and I'm taking pictures, and cars are swerving in front of me. I almost hit a deer. Various things are happening, and then I'm playing back this data as far as testing, and I'm like, and it's like a time lapse movie, but only like the dangerous parts of the bike ride, right? <laughs> not, not the nice parts. And it, like scared the heck out of me. And I said, "Wow, you know, if, if I show this to my daughter, <laughs> she would say, bike riding is dangerous because like all those bike riders feel maybe like once every hour, like something dangerous happens." No, at least to me. It's like once every five minutes in Berkeley, something, something happens. You know, maybe I go through a stop sign, uh, or but uh, most likely other 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 things happen. Uh, Lauren, can you pan up a little bit, please? Or pan down, I mean. Get the ones on the bottom. Okay. So here, here it is on my bicycle. Um, here is like a little. Uh, Arduino uh, CPU that's controlling or working with the distance sensor. They talk by Bluetooth to the phone to get that key. Oh, way over there is uh, a bicyclist that I tried to keep up with, and I don't know if he had a motor in that yellow thing or what. I <laughs> about killed me to keep up with him. So I was doing it for interesting things. And here's a more typical, like, dangerous thing: the street with vehicles backing up in front of you. And uh, I was just amazed at how often the, the danger was. And so, um, so, so this is all going along well. Yeah, please. Yeah, maybe set it down there. And so, the, the date is interesting, but I still have to look down at the screen. There might be sunlight on it for uh, until the screens get better. You can't really see them. Uh, but I did notice that since my focal distance was about the same as the street, I could look down here real quick if it was like in the shade, and I could see the information quickly and respond to it. That was actually useful. So I said, well, that would be more interesting if I had Google goggles that I could wear so I could see them all the time. So, 
So I, I can't buy Google goggles, and I'm not a friend of Larry or Sergey. So I did, like, hopefully the next best thing is I got the uh, ITAC eyewear that the SEAL Team 6 used when they went into Pakistan. They were getting the feeds from the drones. And so this is, like, for SEALs and Marines when they, they want to, like, see what's happening. And they work in bright sunlight. And, um, and so I, a couple of days ago, uh, started wearing these on my uh, bicycle, and so if you see somebody, hold it for a second. So I ride around in Berkeley like this. <laughs> and and all, all this, this is a battery, and this is a, a mount. This is actually a, a police and military mount for a cell phone. If you don't have one of those. So, so I'm like riding around like this, and I can actually, like this stuff is useful, and I'm flashing up more and more stuff, and I'm putting on maps, and I'm seeing pins, and I'm seeing a trail, of, like every time I go over a bump, and every time a dangerous thing happens, I see a different color pin, and I'm like, wow, God, this bike riding stuff is like really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, and uh, so I, I took a ride about two hours ago, I rode around the building, and I was able to, uh, uh, and learn to touch on this. It turned that the street behind here is like bumpier than all get out. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to <laughs> bump, bump. There's no danger? Okay. Um, um, yeah. So, um, what the, the next step is is to uh, work with Google or somebody on the cloud. And so the main purpose is so that bikes and cars can communicate and we can stop bike wrecks. And I think that's the serious part of this. The fun part of it is that wearing the eyewear is just absolutely amazing. And it only takes up about 1 20th of your view. You can clearly see ahead. You can like see important like big icons in less than a half a second. So I don't feel that there's any danger when I'm bike riding. And I would like to invite anybody in the audience after this if they want to like try on like mil spec eyewear uh, that costs a fortune right now, but in a few years will cost like 20 bucks or something from Google. Um, you, you should uh, come up to me and you can try it. Um, and I also found out today when I was like debugging the code, this code was kind of written uh, very recently, like today, is that, <laughs> that I was walking around the office and I started talking to people and, and I'm noticing like different things coming up in the eyewear because I had like I had my bike turned on and other uh, Android devices turned on, so they're all feeding information in, into the eyewear. And so I'm talking with people, but I'm being updated. I say, this is really good. This is, I really want my life and my life to have constant updates all of the time, especially when I'm talking to people because my mind, like, hopefully, is it's like sort of listening to them. <laughs> but, but I might be interested in, in other things. And, and, uh, and, and so, but, but I think uh, I want to get as many people as addicted to this technology as possible. Um, and what I, what I predict is in five years, that when you go in and you get your next pair of glasses, they're going to say, oh, do you want like anti-glare coating? Uh, do you want full color, uh, you know, heads up display? And you'll say, well, of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't I have my display in my, my glasses? Um, so right now I'm working on user interface to this because it has to be very simple, the whole bike safety thing. And, uh, and this is just an everyday life should be like for everyone so there's like no hierarchical menu system or anything like that. It'll probably be just talk and maybe nodding your head a little bit. Uh, um, Here, take the, take the microphone, put those down so that you can ask the next question. Okay, I hope everybody's okay. glad they came tonight. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I think you said last time, but, uh, not this time, which I thought was great, which was too geo-aware objects should never run into each other. Oh, yes. That was Thank very you. good to that from last time. Okay, let's open it up. Any questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, the glasses are really cool, but if your goal is to prevent bike accidents, wouldn't it be better to tell the driver not to open their door? Oh, okay, so you're, yes, and here's the, the scenario. So that the car knows that the, the bike is there, the car, maybe it's typical, most dangerous thing, the, the driver is opening up the door, right? That's what I mean. And so, and it's very easy in the car to, to, to realize that because connect with the cloud. So the car then says to the driver, bicycle approaching from the rear, please shut your door immediately. Or the door locks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then also the same thing with the bicyclist. Uh, car door opening in front, you know, uh, danger, danger. You know, and then flash a little, little thing in the eyepiece. 
Yeah, totally. Uh, I think that would be the huge safety thing is telling the car driver what's happening because it is so hard in a car to see where bicyclists are. Any other questions? Uh, yes. So along the same lines, like in, in, in public health injury prevention, they usually say that engineering control is better than relying on people's behavior changing. So what's your goal in terms of making it an automatic injury prevention system versus relying on the driver listening or the biker actually paying attention and doing what needs to be done? Um, I believe autonomous cars are much better drivers or uh, much better than human drivers. I think probably autonomous bicycles may be better than human drivers in Berkeley. Every single bicycle goes through every stop sign that they can find. Um, as far as preventative measures go, there have been talk about like inflatable airbag vests. I don't know if you want to wear one or, or not. Uh, and I was the inventor of the, um, the autonomous motorcycle, of the automatic kickstand that when it sensed that the motorcycle was going to fall over, it would deploy these kickstands because I got real tired of picking up that real heavy motorcycle, <laughs> which was my job. Um, so I, I would say the automatic systems probably are a lot better. They can respond faster, and they are, are more situationally aware. But I'm not exactly sure on a bicycle how to implement that. But, you know, we've got a good crowd here. Listen to suggestions. Electric brakes. <laughs> <laughs> or, or rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You know, I keep hearing you say connect to the cloud, but they're within sight, uh, distance of each other. Why can't they connect directly yeah. to Google? Uh, if, if, uh, and I think Google may be implementing that in their OS, I'm not sure, but, but yeah, the, the fastest way possible. But the, the advantage of the cloud is that they, the cloud has to know where, where each one is beforehand. But they but, know where each one is by visual uh, recognition. But, yeah, they could do that. Because you, have, you may not have internet connectivity everywhere. Yeah, that would, that would be fine. It would, it would solve the same. What, what, you know, whatever the conduit is will work. That, that might be a little bit faster, what you're suggesting. Right. Any other uh, green shirt? Where did you get those glasses? <laughs> Where did okay. you get those glasses? Okay. No, uh, I, I sent a check out to a thing place for $5,000 and got the glasses for, for a, a TV project that was funded by a major TV network. Hope they're not here now. Okay, um, but then I started, they're, they're really cool. Um, and it's physics, B-U-S-I-X, I believe. And I just got a call from them. So they said that these are not like a regular thing that, uh, that, that you can like order from them. Is that if the military wants them, they can like hit and jump in front of the queue. So they said, they told me that if I want to order more of these, that I should like pay them, to send off my checks like, as fast as I can to get more, because the military might be getting a bunch of them. So I'm thinking, Syria, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. What, like, that's the operations of, you know, what is the, the SEAL team doing? Um, however, I do recommend like, getting these and using them, and you can use them, and they, they're mill spec, you can drop them, and they work underwater a bit. Uh, and, and the only way, uh, I think they weigh probably under an ounce. They're, they're incredible. Okay, Raj. I'm just wondering if, in a sense, um, because this is new data, you know, that for your bicycle ride, all these potential accidents happen, <coughs> if there's not, in a sense, some misinterpretation of the data of flagging too many things as potential accidents, when in reality, of course, you manage to navigate the whole world without actually having an accident, and are there, in a sense, way too many false positives? Is it more, da is it, more is it less dangerous than you're making it look? <laughs> well, like, I, I would invite you to go on a bike ride with me. <laughs> but, but yes, well, I, think, I think overall, if, uh, uh, this hardware that I'm showing you now can probably be retailed uh, like for about 50 bucks. Uh, you know, if you have uh, an Android phone and the eyewear, that's cheap. But I think getting maximum amounts of data, just knowing where a lot of bike accidents happen, both from like this device and, and from government agencies, from their websites, will just give you an overall feeling like how dangerous it is for a bicycle to go there, which is way different than like for a car. Uh, so I think like, like kind of more data, but then, um, but kind of maybe toned down a little bit, but, but it is like, you know, if, if there's a 50% like, chance of like getting in a near accident, like going down the street in a, in a randomized town where there's like uh, the diagonal parking, is that I think that it's really good to convey that to the bike rider that there's like a high probability that somebody's going back out in front of you. So, so even though the, 
Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not going for accuracy, I'm going for, for bulk with data. Okay, two more. Uh, yes? Um, I've found like most of uh, my issues out there, like the, the area I can't see, like in front, I'm good, I got that. But the uh, on a motorbike in particular, I've been caught out by a car speeding behind me, so I can glance at my rear vision mirror. I know it's three car lanes behind me, I gotta move. If it's speeding, it's actually, you know. Okay, crashing. so flippant answer is that a motorcycle should always go faster than a car. <laughs> but the, the serious answer is that, that you should use the, the, the more expensive uh, $100 LIDAR version that that, yes. that that makes up a point cloud around you. And that is the way that actually Google keeps a vast amount of information, more than any of us probably ever can imagine about the streets and that. They keep a point cloud also. So yeah, the, uh, you just use a, a much better than like my $20 sonar thing. You use 360 degrees. Uh, one last question, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's all one out there, yeah. Uh, yes? Have you thought about Finding ways to pull in data from like accident databases, like if the ESF bike coalition keeps something like that, and so does the East Bay bike coalition too. Uh, yeah, and actually, people have contacted me about that. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, it would, it would uh, be like an open database, and everybody would just put their data in. Uh, uh, but totally, I think the, the bicycle groups, uh, you know, across the world, they they should uh, would hopefully be supporting the database, and ultimately, that the database would be more important than the hardware. Thank you. Thanks for doing this.